morning, good morning, good morning, everybody, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God, hallelujah, bless the King, oh my soul. It is Monday morning. I don't know about y'all, but man, I'm ready to get this week started. And what better way to start it than with our medicine, our morning medicine. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the King. Today's morning medicine. The prescription comes from Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11. 26, verse 11. And the Bible says, as a dog returns to its vomit, so does a fool repeat it. As a dog returns to its vomit, so does a dog repeat it, its folly. Some translations say that a dog repeats its foolishness. Repeats its foolishness. You know, one of the things that we hear often, well, one of the things, not even say we hear often, one of the things that everybody wants to excel. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Everybody should want to advance. Everybody should want to go further. And oftentimes, we don't really realize that in the midst of going further, we are the ones that become our own obstacles. We are the ones that become our own obstacles when it comes to advancing or progressing or moving forward. But oftentimes, we can convince ourselves in our mind that we want to move forward, but yet never demonstrate or never manifest or allow the forward movement to operate out ourselves physically. And this is what I want to speak about today with our morning medicine. Because what stops us is that we become repeated offenders. What do I mean by that? You become a repeated offender and that what you keep repeating is the very thing that stops you from advancing. For our morning medicine this morning, the scripture in Proverbs chapter 26, 11 speaks about no advancement. If you look at this proverb and you look at and uncover it, it speaks of a place of no advancement. That's what I want to harp on today. There's no progression. Well, why is there no progression? Because this person has become a repeated offender. They have become a repeated offender. And it's easy for any of us to find ourselves in this place that we become a repeated offender and when we become a repeated offender, we come against our own progression. We come against our own advancement. There's no growth in that. You keep running around like a dog chasing its tail. Not advancing, not progressing, not moving forward. And the Lord wants to break us of this mentality of being a repeated offender that continues in the folly that he says it's time for you to be delivered from. It's time for you to advance. It's time for you to grow. It's time for you to progress. Notice that the scripture, the Lord points out and says, as a dog returns to its vomit. In other words, this is uncharacteristic. He returns to its vomit. And I love it that the Bible says vomit because vomit is something that doesn't even make sense for you to return to. 
Vomit is something that is despicable. But yet the dog returns back to it. So what God is communicating here in this proverb is that what we're returning to is despicable. It doesn't even make sense for you to return to it. So the question then becomes, why do we re continue to return to it? Why do I continue to return to it if it's that despicable? Why? Why do I continue to return back to something that is repulsive? It really don't even make sense why I'm returning back to it. Good question. And for our morning medicine, I want to hit on three things of why we continue to be repeated offenders. Three things of why we continue to be repeated offenders. Number one, we never learn from our mistakes. We never learn from the sin. I'm going to say that even more. We never learn from the sin. We never learn from what the sin did or continues to do to my life. We never learn from it. Even though we experience the consequences, that doesn't mean you learn from the consequences. We don't learn from it. Sometimes the reason why we keep repeating it is because we never learn the lesson from what we kept, keep repeating. We never learn from it. Have you learned from the mistake? Have you learned from what you keep repeating? Have you learned the lesson? Because it's obvious that we haven't because you keep repeating it. So obviously there's a disconnect there because you still haven't learned and you haven't still haven't learned to the degree that you keep, that you stop repeating it. You haven't learned from your mistake. You haven't learned from that sin. You haven't learned from that error. You haven't learned from that valley. You haven't learned. And sometimes we haven't learned to such a degree. That's why you keep repeating it. I love it in the scriptures. That when Peter denied Christ, you never saw him repeat that again. He learned. He learned how it felt. He learned how, what it was like to be in that place to deny the Lord. He learned that he never wanted to be in a place that was separated from God. He learned. He learned from that. He learned. And we haven't learned. Number two, number two, we refute, we refute correction. The reason why we continue to be re repeated offenders is that we refute correction. You refuse to be corrected. You fight against it. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You don't even want to hear when somebody tries to correct you about your foolishness. You don't want to hear it. As a matter of fact, you get upset when somebody comes at you and try to refute you and tell you about your vomit, about the foolishness you keep repeating. You find ways to avoid them. You find ways to attack them. You come back at them. And effect, one of the famous phrases Christians we use is, who are you to judge? 
I'm your brother and sister to judge you. That's who I am to judge. I'm the instrument that God called to correct you. To help you break this foolishness. That's who I am. And as a matter of fact, the Bible tells us as believers that we have to judge each other. Why? To keep each other on point. We judge each other to break each other from this chain of foolishness. So we won't continue to be repeated offenders. Because God is tired of us repeating, returning to this vomit. But we refuse to be corrected. And I'm going to park right here on this one a little bit because I don't know how the enemy has came in and we come to this place as a believer, but we feel like we don't have to be corrected. We feel that people should accept where I am. What if I told you that's not where God wants you to stay though? That's where you are, but that's not where he wants you to stay. So sometimes God allows instruments to be used to correct you, to push you, to get you out of that foolishness. Because sometimes you don't even realize how foolish it is. The Bible says that a dog returns to his vomit so a fool repeats his foolishness. Sometimes everyone else can see how foolish it is, but you don't even see how foolish it is. Sometimes we can't see it in the way that God says we need to see it. That's why you keep repeating it. And God has to bring a corrective tool to you so you can actually see how foolish you, how foolish you sound and how foolish you're doing. And we don't see the foolishness. We don't even see where it's taken us. And God says, I'm trying to wake you up to reality that you can't see. You can't even see it's vomit anymore. You start to treat it like a steak on a plate. And God says, I got to bring that correction to you. Because somewhere in there, you've repeated it. And you repeated it to the degree that you can't let that thing go. And you start thinking there's nothing wrong with it. You start thinking that you still have time to stay in it. Dismissing that the Bible says tomorrow is not promised. Dismissing that God says you don't even understand that what you're doing will lead you to a place. That's why I have to bring people in to correct you to redirect your path. Because if you eat vomit, you're headed to vomit. And God says, I'm trying to correct you. So you start repeating that offense. And number three, why do we continue to be repeated offenders? Stunning our own growth, not advancing where God calls us to advance. Number three, we start enjoying the vomit. Let me just, we start enjoying the vomit. That don't even sound right, do it? We start enjoying the vomit. Why do you continue to be a repeat offender? Because some way in there, you start to believe the lie and start to enjoy the vomit. Some, sometimes we can become addicted, comfortable with the vomit. it can start tasting good to us. That's why we don't want to let it go. We become blinded by the lust of the money. We become blinded by the lust of the feeling. We become blinded and we, be, we start to enjoy the vomit. Repeating that I start to enjoy it. 
That's why I keep repeating it. I've never liked vomit before, but it now becomes a delicacy to me. It wasn't supposed to be on your menu, but yet we start to settle with the vomit. And then we start to think we can't live without it. We start being comfortable being the dog that returns to his vomit. We start to enjoy it. And let's people become addicted, watch this, to the drama around the vomit. To be in that drama, to be in all that mess, to be in all that trash, you start to enjoy it. You like all of that. And you like it to such a degree that it no longer matters where it would take you. Do you understand that? See, this, this is so, so, so much because as the Bible says, a dog returns its vomit. If the enemy can get you to start enjoying the vomit, then you'll miss where he's taking you. You won't even see it. Matter of fact, you'll even speed up the pace because you've learned to enjoy it. And see, this is what God is trying to have us to understand. Because some of us have become entangled in the sin because the truth of the matter, you enjoy that sin. You enjoy dibbling, dabbling in it. Somewhere in there, you start to become so comfortable with it, you think it's become a part of you. You now, you now in your mind think that you need to cheat on your wife in order for your marriage to be good. In order for your marriage to survive, you have to cheat. You have to have that side partner. You start to enjoy the vomit. You start to enjoy being caught up in all of that mess. You start to enjoy it. And that's why it's easier for you to excuse it. In the Old Testament, this is one of the issues. They have been in Egypt for so long that when things start to get rough, when things start to get hard, when Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and the Bible says they thought he took too long, what did they do? They start to go back to the things they enjoyed. They start to go back to the, the vomit. Repeated offenders, repeating the very things that God said, I'm trying to deliver you from, they went back because they repeated offenders. They enjoyed the mess. They enjoyed the vomit. That's why they shaped the golden calf and start to rejoice around it. And this is the same thing that we do. And especially when times get rough, especially when times get hard, we go back to the very things that we enjoy because that helps us get through it. That's what we think. And so we go back and build these golden calves. We go back and build these things. And as we build in these things, we start to dismiss God and we start to enjoy the idol, the thing that we built more than the God who's over everything, the more than the God that we that we say we give our lives to. We become repeated offenders. Because somewhere in there, we fooled ourselves to enjoy the vomit. So for our morning medicine today, I just want to leave us with this thought today. Are you a repeated offender? And do you understand who ultimately you're offending? You're offending God because God wants you to grow. You're offending who God calls you to be. You're offending your own self. 
because you're offending your own growth. So I want to leave us with that morning medicine this morning because we have the power to repeat it. But why don't we have the power to be delivered of it? If we choose to redirect that power, we can stop being repeated offenders. You can learn from what God is trying to teach you because he's trying to advance you. You can learn and receive correction because God is trying to redirect you. And those things were meant for you to enjoy. And if you found yourself in a place where you start to enjoy the sin, that's a scary place because that in itself becomes a stronghold. And that stronghold once it gets a hold, becomes out of control. And God says, won't you help that power by choosing to use that power to break what the enemy is trying to do in your life. So for our morning medicine today, we don't have to be repeated offenders if you choose not to be. This is your morning medicine. Y'all have a blessed day.